just start injury wise, nothing on the injury front. Dylan had a, had a rib um, bruise essentially, so he should be good uh, to go. He may be, be limited during the week, but he should be good to go for the game. And everything else has been normal bumps and bruises, nothing of any uh, consequence to report there. So just your normal post game stuff. Uh, other than that, you know, after watching the tape, I don't feel really any differently than I did uh, yesterday after the game. Um, I thought our defense had a really, really nice performance. I think Tavondre Sweat um, really showed up for us, both in the run and the pass game, which was really nice to see. Uh, I, thought, I thought we got great pressure all day long. Uh, forced Caleb to do what we, we were hoping to do, is keep him in the pocket as best we could. And, and then when he went to go extend plays, to get him on the ground. And I thought, for the most part, uh, we did a really good job there. So the Russian coverage worked together well. And um, defensively, they put a winning performance. Obviously, our errors on special teams, we give up a big um, kickoff return and we give a, a punt block for a touchdown. Both were um, the punt block was certainly just a, a, a one on one loss. Um, there wasn't anything schematically issued, but that was an issue with that. It's more technique and execution. Um, and then the long kickoff return, we didn't get off any blocks to, to get a tackle and they hit a seam on it. So the new kickoff is a work in progress. You know, we're finding out new things every week and um, they got a good returner back there as well. And, and he made the most of it. But uh, then offensively, um, obviously our, our inability to, to possess the ball was, was poor. Um, didn't do, you know, in a game like that when our defense was playing that well. Uh, knew where we were headed, knew the type of game it needed to be, um, and, and we just couldn't turn it over. And that was the fatal flaw, was the was, you know, two turnovers and one for a touchdown and one that led to a field goal. And so we gave them 10 points off offensive turnovers and another seven off a, a pump block. And you're not going to win uh, any games in the NFL doing that. So that was disappointing. Um, but but a lot to clean up and a lot to get better. This was a team that made a lot of special teams mistakes before you got here to see any carryover in, in, in that, or is that a unique thing to this team now? I, I just, yeah, no, I, I don't think there's any carryover. I think we just didn't play uh, up to our ability in special teams. And um, that was disappointing because I thought really we've had a really good preseason and really good training camp in the special teams area. I was excited to see what we would look like on special teams. I thought we'd be better than we were uh, in the game. So I don't see any carryover. I just, I don't think we played our best game on special teams. What was, how was Will today and, and what's the balance in wanting to kind of learn from those mistakes and then trying to move on and forget about them? Um, there's really no, there's no balance. I mean, you got to learn from them and uh, there's, there are hard lessons to learn. And I think what's important is that everything about Will up to that point, you know, you don't know if you've if you've um, made the progress or not until you play in a game, and and those are just things that I was surprised that he did. Uh, the sack fumble, not much you can do about that. The guy comes free off his backside, he doesn't see it. He's getting ready to draw on the throw, and the guy rakes his arm. That happens. But um, the interception was a really poor decision. Uh, I know what he was trying to do. He's trying to do the right thing in that case, but sometimes the right thing is to take a sack, um, and, and he should have done that in that particular case. They they had a blitz on that wasn't expected in that area. And uh, they, they won that rep, and, and we just got to not make a bad play worse and take the sack. So tough pill to swallow for him, tough lesson to learn. Um, but he's got to learn it. Well, on that interception, is it just as simple on, as just – Hold on one second. I will, go ahead. You talked about situational awareness for Will, I guess, on that, on that interception play. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys probably would have been punting anyway, right, whether he takes the sack or whatever. Correct. He, so is that the kind of thing that – It's exactly happen? it. It's – it's knowing how to protect the ball. Um, and, and it's a conversation that, frankly, we, you know, we'd had on the sideline um, kind of at the, at the end of the third quarter. It was like, look, this is, they haven't done anything on offense. Our defense is playing lights out. We don't have to be exceptional on offense right now. We're trying to still win the game. We're still trying to go score. But limiting the errors is what's going to win us this game. And. To have that happen was disappointing, knowing that it's just we, we couldn't afford that. And we're probably going to have a chance to win the game if we just punt it. And, uh, and that's, again, tough lesson to learn uh, in a moment like that that loses you a game. Go ahead, Tron. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask, but I, I'll switch to a, another one. Those two drives that you had, like they were long drives. I think the one was like eight minutes. Mm -hmm. It seemed like you were in a rhythm there. What is it that kept you from having that rhythm you know, extrapolated throughout the, the full game. Yeah, it's uh, – look, if you look at the down and distances, that's part of it. You know, we went – I don't think we faced a third down in that first touchdown drive. Um, I think we went first down, second down, first down. And then if you look at it, it was first and ten, second and four, first and ten, second and two, first and ten, second and four. Like, 
that's what the rhythm should feel like. And, and, and hopefully when you're in the third down, it's third and two to five. Right. Uh, we're in a manageable distance. And I think that's what, that's what the rhythm feels like. Um, that's what you'd like it to feel like more. Um, our issues came when we were, were knocked back into these, you know, I think 14 of our 21 second downs were at second and seven plus. And so that puts you out of some things. Your whole offense is initially open to you. Your, your, your play actions aren't nearly as effective because they're not playing for the, they're not playing for the run. Um, those things derail your rhythm in a sense. And so that the, the penalties put us back. I think, you know, we had a, we had one, you know, a negative run or two that put us back, but anytime that you're dealing in, in second and a couple of them were second and 12, 13, 14, um, that knocks you off your rhythm pretty significantly. And you're facing third and 10, 11, 12s. Those are, those are traditionally pretty hard to convert at a, at a high enough rate to keep your drives going. So. That's where we got off track, and that's the the difference in the two the two touchdown drives was the rhythm, and you could see the difference in the ones that weren't. And so I got to do a better job um, in some of those spots too. I, I can do put us in a better position, but um, that's that's really what the where the rhythm gets knocked off. When the interception happened, did you at all like look at the replay to see maybe if his knee was down so you could challenge and say it was a sack? Um, it looked pretty <laughs> looked pretty close uh, to potentially a challenge. I, it wasn't. I felt like live, it didn't look like he, his knee was down. And so I didn't think it, and I didn't hear anything from upstairs either. So, um, no, I, I did, the thought didn't cross my mind. Because when I looked at it, I felt like that was a pretty clean uh, interception from, from his standpoint. Watching the tape, trying to kind of diagnose what went wrong with the offensive line in the second mm -hmm. half, it, it seemed like the Bears kind of just widened their approach on the edge mm -hmm. and forced your tackles to over or under set, and they were having a hard time with that. You guys yeah. seemed to try to address that, putting extra bodies, tight ends, running backs in there, but it didn't really work. What, was that what you saw? And maybe how? What, what's a counter punch there that you would have rather done differently? Yeah, no, I mean, we, we had we had some help plans designed to go help. I mean, it's, it's JC's first game in there. We tried to help where we could. Uh, tried to help Nick, too. It's We're always going to try to help the tackles as best possible, especially, you know, I think those guys – with Sweat, obviously, and then even Darrell Taylor, who's a, who's a pretty good rusher himself. Um, you know, we did as much as we could to help him while still managing. You manage both things. So you manage trying to help the edges, uh, but you're still trying to get guys out in the pattern so you can affect the coverage structure. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a give and take, you know, and so we, we were trying to work through that. Um, I would say that it wasn't anything that was new or unexpected. I mean, we, we, we had that plan going into the game to help the tackles when we could. and, and provide a little bit of extra support in there when you're on the road and on the silent count, the rushers definitely have the advantage. And so, um, yeah, that was that. What was the second part of your question you asked? Just about what, what kind of counter punches you, you can make in-game adjustments for to address. Yeah, I mean, we, we do it. We adjust every, between every series. You know, it's it's a constant communication between all the guys on the staff and up from up front to upstairs and uh, at the receiver position. There's, there's a lot of communication in between series that it's sort of a series by series adjustment. And um, you know those conversations are sort of always ongoing, and sometimes you make you hit on an adjustment, and sometimes it's it's a cat and mouse game back and forth between you and the defense. And um, they hit on a couple, we hit on a couple too, but it wasn't ultimately enough to for us to uh, do better on offense than we did. Is Will drifting unnecessarily off his midline? Those a couple times, yeah, where his, his he didn't need to drift in the pocket. Um, you know, and those are things that you don't see until until it's live, and uh, everything in training camp looked. Good, solid. He's starting to. He was playing well, playing with confidence, and um, his footwork was was exactly what we were looking for. And then in the game, some things kind of reverted back. I think that's kind of true across most of the positions, uh, especially our younger players. Um, we had some some technique reversions and uh, some things that just didn't show up the way they had shown up in practice. And uh, that part was uh, the, that was the disappointing part for me uh, was just to see some of that those things that we think we've we've gotten fixed that that showed up again in a game situation. So that part um, was, was um, again, disappointing. How do you coach reversion out of a young player, especially with Will when you say it's tough to see progress? Mm -hmm. Just how do you figure out how to take somebody with a book on who might be, he makes these mental mistakes and yeah. can fix that? Keep coaching. You know, we coach every day. And there's really no, there's no, uh, there's no shortcut to that. And this is the first time I've gotten to see Will in a game environment. The thing that I was really encouraged about uh, with Will on the sideline is that his 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 resiliency, his demeanor, uh, his ability to see and communicate what he was seeing was really really positive. So that 
left me really encouraged in terms of our game day operation. Um, and then we just got to clean up. He's got to get comfortable playing football again. I mean, he took he was under a little bit of duress, and that that certainly has an effect. Um, took a couple of hits in the pocket, and and again, that's quarterbacking in the NFL. You're going to get hit. It happens. Um, we can be better in our protection and make him feel a little more comfort back there. Um, but yeah, he's he's also got to see where he can improve his spots, and that's all you do is you just keep coaching it. And every time you go out there and play, you hope that it gets it gets better. You guys, on that same, on that same like there are a couple Brian. opportunities that that left us uh, and really might not have been on the same page. Mm -hmm. One on the left side, that the long pass, and it looked like yeah. maybe Will just just threw it too far, and then the other. The yeah, that's uh, the first. So the one the one play that, that he got left inside, um, Will got. He got a little bit of contact as he was throwing the ball, and, and he couldn't get everything on. And we had that one. That was, should have been a touchdown. Um, so that would I would not attribute that one to being not on the same page. That was more just a disruption in his throwing mechanics. Um, but the second one was, you know, it was third and 15. And, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, there's not a lot of awesome calls for third and 15. And so sometimes your best shot is to just see if you can run by somebody and give the guy a chance. And then usually what ends up happening is at worst, it's incomplete. You're going to punt it anyway. You draw a DPI or a defensive <coughs> holding. Uh, or you complete it. And so I told Will before that play specifically that that was the intent of why I was calling this play uh, was to see if to give him a chance. And then he just didn't give him a chance. And he just threw the ball out of bounds. And so um, those are those are what we call beer balls. Um, everyone gets a beer because he throws it out of bounds. And it's 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 funny and all that. But it's you know, it's serious because it's like, you know, those, those are those are inexcusable throws. And that's got to be better. There was one other one on the Right side, I think it was in the second half. It looked like Calvin was taking more of a straight shot, and Will looked like he was maybe throwing over. Yeah, it. he was throwing him. He was Bill was throwing a back shoulder ball, which is what it should have been. Um, Calvin's eyes had to be around by ten yards. He he went too deep, um, so Calvin was not where he was supposed to be, and Will was throwing the ball where he was expecting Calvin to be. So, um, yeah, that one they definitely didn't get that one on the same page. Right, we talked about. Go ahead. Well, I, I Paul before right, we another one on technique reversion. Yeah. You, you, you did see it in preseason games, Will not sliding mm -hmm. and initiating contact. You said you talked with him about it. He said he talked to it. He had a first down yesterday, and he went airborne and almost initiating contact himself. Yes. There's technique reversion that seems yes. like it's already been addressed and, and yep. dealt with. But does that make you fearful on the technique reversion thing that here's something we've discussed, we've been through, this is not a first-time mistake, and he's still not doing what we've discussed? Uh, no, not fearful. That's the wrong word. Um, I would say that it's just another opportunity to keep coaching it. And it's, I liken it to, you know, the best way to describe it is everybody that's has kids, you know, it's sometimes they do it exactly how you want them to. And sometimes you told them a hundred times and they still do it that way. And so, uh, that's part of our job is to keep coaching that and, and doing our best to, um, improve that part of his game. And, and he's, he's got to learn to protect himself. Um, some of that stuff is, is too much. He doesn't need that. We don't need that. Um, and I think he's aware of that. Now it's just a matter of, you know, we've told him and he knows and we've talked about it and we've seen it and he did it again. And so you, know, you got to keep keep hammering the same point. And um, to me, that's, that's a lot of what coaching is, is you, is you keep trying to get guys to understand the message. And, and at some point it, it clicks and makes sense and the light bulb goes on. And um, I had this, we had the same things with, with Joe Burrow uh, in Cincinnati. It was very similar. He. He was he would hold the ball. He would take risk, unnecessary risks. Took a lot of hits early in his career, um, his first two years, and and he learned very quickly that that's not a sustainable way to play football. And if you want to be available to our team on on game days, then you better start making better decisions. And so uh, it is a process, and it does take some time. And again, Will in his tenth start, um, there's some things that that he's got to keep striving to be better at. In this process, a small sample size in the preseason, but you guys found a rhythm offensively. You didn't really have penalties. You kind of did all the things you'd want to see in that time. Was there anything that really surprised you by what you guys put forth yesterday in, a, in regular season action or maybe disappointed you at the end? Um, you know, I think we had a very clear uh, clear vision on, on how we had to play the game and what we needed to do offensively. Uh, again, we have a, a relatively young offense in our quarterback and our line. Uh, going on a road in a really, really loud environment in week one was always going to be a challenge. Um, and there's no way to simulate that. And even in the preseason, we were, I was hoping that New Orleans would be really loud. And, and then again, you're going up against you know, one of the better defenses in football uh, last year. And, and obviously, there's no reason to think that they wouldn't be the same this year. Um, so yeah, there was, there was some things that you know, we didn't do well enough. We didn't handle the silent count well enough. I didn't think we handled uh, some of the noise well enough with some false starts. Um, 
obviously you can't turn the ball over on the road uh, in the opening week, and we did that more times than, than you can do in a game and win. Um, so yeah, those those things that, that I was hoping to see that were better, and, and we weren't, and that's part of the reason why we lost the game. Going back to the process of you know developing a young quarterback, you talked about the light coming on for Burrow. Is it more of and all of a sudden thing, things click for a guy once he sees it two or three times? Or is it just a gradual process where the light flickers a few times, has to flicker a few times before it comes on? I think it varies from player to player. I think some some guys uh, get it a lot quickly. Um, some guys flicker for a while. <laughs> and uh, you don't really know until you until you go through it a couple of times. And um, you know we'll see. I, I, I couldn't tell you how that's going to work for us. But yeah, there's. It just depends. I think it's it's very circumstantial and dependent on, on the player. You guys were in shotgun 78% of your snaps. Is that more indicative of your scheme or a, a matchup-based thing? And then for a quarterback like mm -hmm. Will, what are the pros and cons of operating out of shotgun? A lot of that ended up being probably game script related. You know, we were in these in, in second and seven plus a lot, which is, you know, you're not really fooling a lot of people being under center in second and 12. Um, so that's a part of it. Uh, I think in a, in a little bit more of a normal rhythm and game script, it probably isn't that skewed. I would like it to not be that skewed, if that you know, to be frank about it. Um, so yeah, we have we have all we have all the different ways to to manage it, and I think that it, some of that stuff on base down just got away from us a bit. Um, I certainly would like to be under under center and play action more, um, but again, like I said, it's it's hard to play action on, on second and ten, and. Um, there is things that we can do that I can do better for sure. Um, I, I have my own after action briefing that I go through and think about because I, I do have a pretty good sense of like what calls I was debating between in certain moments and uh, which ones would have been better. And sometimes the answer is I called the right one and sometimes there's I wish I would have done something different. And um, that's all part of my process too as a you know as a as a new play caller. I gotta I gotta find ways to get better myself and um, I have no doubt that that'll happen. After a loss like that, Brian, like. What type of a tone do you want to set with your team as they get back into the building and look forward? Um, same way as I said it last night for them. And at the end of the day, it's it's one game uh, out of out of 17, and um, we got a lot of things to get better at, a lot of things to improve. Our our, our detail, our urgency, our technique have to get better. Um, but the, you know, the sky doesn't fall. You know that we we did a lot of things to to help lose that game. Um, and again, the, the adage in the NFL is that there's, it's, it's really, really hard to win, but it's pretty easy to lose. And, uh, and we found a way to lose, unfortunately. And so uh, you just you go back and you find where you can clean it up. Um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a negative tone. There's just we all know we can get better. It's constructive. And, um, and you move forward because we've got a really good defense coming in here again um, on Sunday. I mean, it's for as good as, the Bear, the, as good as the Bears' defense is, the Jets is just as good. So... Uh, we have another test ahead of us and our hands full. In, in your experience, how much of a jump can there be from a team after you get a game under your belt and kind of figure out, all right, here's what we're operating with? Yeah, there's usually a pretty significant jump um, in a lot of different areas, usually in the first, I'd say, month of the season. You know, there, there's a lot of things that improve. Guys start to feel better. They're, they start to get in playing shape. They start to get in that in the mid-season form, if you will, you know, as they, as they start to get more reps banked in, in real situations. Um, and so that part is we're still learning about our team, and we're going to continue to for the next couple of weeks. Um, and every time we go out there, we'll learn a little bit more. And I think that uh, our process is, is one of, of growth, and it's consistent, and we're going to keep finding what we do well and keep trying to find ways to highlight that. And the only way you find out is by playing football games. Um, and you'd like to be able to do those things after wins. It's a lot easier to keep improving after you win, but um, you still got to do the same process after a loss. And so I don't treat them any different. Um, you're still critical of the mistakes. You're still critical of the technique, and, and you still keep coaching whether you win or lose. The same consistent approach usually tends to be the best one. With the running backs and the distribution of touches, mm -hmm. I think Pollard has 16 yep. carries. Spears had five or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, was that just like going with the hot hand? Is that how you wanted it entering that game? Or what was behind um, that? No, I think I think I think Tony ran the ball well. Um, he, he was doing a nice job. I, I'd like to get more for Tajay. Um, I'd like to get him going a little bit more. Uh, we can make that division of labor probably a little closer to equal. I think at the end of the day, Tajay found his way onto the field a little more on some of the third downs. Um, but yeah, I, I would like that to be a little more even and, and for Tajay to get a little more work too. I, I, I regret that part of it. And, and now that you've been through a game with all these playmakers that you have, how was it just trying to, like you did the reverse for uh, mm -hmm. the end of the round for um, 
Burks, you know, you went to Ridley, you, you tried to get Hop involved when it wasn't possible, but how was it just you know, making sure that everybody got their opportunities. Uh, it was good. I mean, again, there, there's there's areas that I can improve too to keep finding ways to get some of the guys the ball. I mean, um, you know, Calvin got seven targets. I think to go back even to your initial question about the running back usage, I think part of that was particularly in the second half. You know, we didn't sustain any drives either. You know, we didn't get we didn't get enough bites at the apple, if you will, and so that affected some of those things. Um, we had, what, 61 plays. I think uh, if you're really humming on offense, you're probably up over 70. And so it makes it a little easier to distrib distribute some of those reps and, and target some guys in some more areas, too. I, I think that um, it all sort of works hand in hand for me. Um, but I thought the process was good. I thought our, our intent was right. Um, and we just got to do, we can clean some things up. You singled out Sweat, Walk. You singled out sweat at the top. Just yeah. Was what you saw from him and Jeff together kind of what you expected when you brought him in? And, and how? Mm -hmm. valuable is, is that pairing, as you're saying? Uh, yeah, it was really pretty impressive. Um, I think Sweat has sort of been on a consistent arrow up. He's been rising, I think, ever since he's gotten here. Um, and and every, every week that went by in training camp, he got more comfortable. He got better. His weight went down. He's getting more in shape. He's learning how to play. Uh, and that was really, really good to see. I mean, he was a force. And, and we have two forces inside, I think, that make life really hard. Um, and I thought we rushed on the edge as well, too. I think Harold did a really nice job. I think Arden um, and then the guys that rotated behind him filled in those spots as, uh, admirably as well. So, And it was a game where when you have a quarterback like Caleb and you're trying to cage rush him and keep him in the pocket, um, there's a lot of unselfish rushing that has to go on because you're all sort of doing a job together to try to contain a quarterback in the pocket. Um, it's not about winning your one-on-one -on -one all the time. It's about keeping the quarterback contained. Um, and I thought all of them as a defensive line group, um, did a really, really nice job of, of rushing unselfishly. Um, and, and the plan in place was really well executed. And I thought even you know Sebastian and Keandre, those, those guys all did a really nice job. I was very impressed by, by how they played. But Jeff and, and Sweat inside, are uh, that's a force. Uh, that's a duo in there that's going to be really hard for people to deal with. Given the Tell background and, and uh, you know, the, the receivers that you guys added this year as well, it, it, I, I feel like Maybe a lot of fans in general expected maybe a little bit more of an aired out kind of performance in week one. Mm -hmm. Is that are people just off in those expectations, or is that like a week to week, opponent to opponent? Uh, it's week to week. It's situational. I, I think we got um, we were doing our best in a hostile environment on the road against a pretty good defense, and and one that you know, especially when our defense came out and started playing the way they were, there was a little bit of a complimentary aspect to it where I was doing my best to keep us aggressive enough, but being mindful of, of the ball, and you know we still ended up turning it over. So maybe I won't do that again. I don't know, but um, it was just it was it was situational. I just uh, we were playing so good on defense that it's almost as if I mean if we just punted it on first and ten every time we might have won the game. Um, the way the way that you know we gave it away. So um, yeah, there's there's going to be there's going to be schemes. I mean, here's what I will say is uh, the game script was challenging, especially in the second half. Hard to get some of the 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 action shots and the deep shots off. Um, I would have liked to call a couple more screens. We didn't get those off. And the ones I did call weren't very good. Um, and at the end of the day, when you are having a little bit more rhythm, you can get to some more of the movements and movement of the pocket. And, and that just we just got stuck a few times. Um, so we didn't get a chance to get to maybe all of the things that I was hoping to be able to get to. So um, it definitely was situational in this game. And I was also trying to make sure that um, – our, our, our youth on offense, I try to settle those guys into the game a little bit too. And so, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, so I would say that, you know, whatever, whatever you saw in the first week isn't necessarily what our, our finished product will be um, at any point. But, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of room for us to be a lot better on offense, and, and hopefully we see that improvement. Kelly, Kelly uh, you're a first-year head coach and obviously traveling back from a road game. Uh, the Tyreek Kill situation. Mm -hmm. uh, as a first-year coach, do you talk, was it on your list at all this year, to talk with players about what to do if they have police interaction? Um, yeah, you know, they have those. The NFL actually does some of those meetings as well. Um, a lot of that stuff is – you, you, you talk about it when you can, uh, if it comes up, and certainly it's, you know, when you're, if you're running late to the game or there's, you know, there's a lot of issues around the stadiums that happen all the time, and, um, you know, I, I can't speak to what happened. I just saw the news like you guys did as I was sitting in my office, but, um, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate those kind of things have to happen. Um, 
and there's ways to handle them and, and there's ways to not handle them. And so we do our best to try to have guys uh, educated on the best way to interact and, and handle those spots when, if, if and when they ever get into them. That over some of the mistakes, guys would get yelled at in meetings today. Do guys still get yelled at in meetings today over stuff, or is it is it a more uh, friendly and constructive kind of thing? Um, if it's you know if it's mistakes that are repeated mistakes that have been happening, um, then you'll probably get yelled at. But if it's a a new mistake on you know something that we haven't seen before, um, they might show some grace. But you know there's always room to you know get some corrections. As you, as you look back at what you guys did on defense yesterday, how I, how you think it went overall, and what are some ways you can even get better? Um, I think overall, you know, we did good. Guys were competing. Um, we were physical. Um, we had an idea of you know when they got in certain formations what they're going to do. So credit to you know guys studying you know throughout the week, game planning. Um, but you know there was still some communication. Um, you know getting the calls in a little later. Um, guys weren't able to get lined up as you know exact as we want to be. Um, but you know, it's the first game of the year. It's kind of, kind of expected to have some lapses, but you know, overall, I felt like we were competing, and you know, guys were out there on defense. We were having fun. How do you like the the job that Denard Wilson did, calling the defense, and, you know, and, and finding success against Caleb Williams? Um, I thought it was good. I mean, all last week we had a good game plan. Um, you know, we had an idea of how they're going to try to attack us and how they're going to try and play the game, um, and you know, they kind of held true to you know what we were studying, even though. They didn't have a play the game yet, um, so I just give a credit to him for preparing us, and then a credit to you know just my teammates for you know getting extra work in and you know working together in the film room. You've seen his intensity in practice preseason. Is it something that turned up a bit on game day, or was it pretty much the same? Um, I would say that his intensity on game day is a little lower than uh, practices. You know, he tells us that it's, that's our time to you know go out there and work, and it's our time to play. Um, so, I mean, obviously, you know, if we make a mistake, you know, he'll, he'll let you know that you did it. But I would say that throughout training camp, he was more, more loud and, you know, aggressive then. You know? I know you guys don't chew on it too long, but you've been around for a while and there have been some, some disappointing losses o over your time. When, when you left the field or sat at your locker, whenever you had your moment yesterday, what did this one feel like compared to some of those other disappointments? Um, I would say that, you know, it sucked. You know, obviously, you know, we were up 17. You know, we were, we were expecting the, as defense to go out there and make sure we get a stop and, you know, give our offense a chance to, you know, get another another jump on the lead. But, you know, stuff happens in this league, um, special teams, offense, you know, we just got to control what we can control. Um, you know, it's kind of reminded me, not as much, but a little bit of the um, Cardinals, the Cardinals' first game of the year a couple years ago. I think we lost about 35 to, like, 14 or something like that. But. Uh, we responded and, you know, we ended up going like 12 and 5 the rest of that year. So, you know, I have great confidence in, you know, our team. Uh, we have a lot of great veterans and great young players that are good players. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not worried about us. I think we're going to be just fine. How much of a difference is a guy like, how much of a difference is a guy like Tavondre Sweat made in the middle of the defense for you guys on the back end? Um, I mean, he's an impact player, uh, especially in the run game. I mean, whenever the running back takes, gets the ball and then has to first step is sideways because you got, you know, 360 pounds in front of you. I mean, that makes, that takes stress off of us, you know, just watching games yesterday and, you know, running backs are getting on them safeties pretty quick for other teams. But, you know, for us, you know, we have a good front and, you know, good linebackers that are able to, you know, get off blocks and, you know, build a wall and an edge. What was communication like for you guys in the secondary with all the new faces yesterday, maybe as opposed to a game where you had familiarity with mm -hmm. it. Um, it was pretty good. I mean, I would just say obviously it needs to be, you know, better, a um, little improve, improvement. But um, I mean, for our first time out there, you know, we were lined up. Um, it's fun. You know, we have a good good group of guys in, in our secondary. So it's fun when you watch film after the game to watch each player like you see them, you know, do some dominant stuff, you know, every other player, whatever it may be. But, you know, I just know that we we're out there um, just playing fast. Some of the guys yesterday were talking about wanting to turn some of those batted balls into turnovers. Is that just luck, the way the ball bounces, or is there something you guys can do to kind of convert that? Um, I mean, there was one, I think uh, Sebastian tipped, and it landed right in between the middle of three guys. I think that just that just happens. I mean, nothing you, really you can do there. Um, but there are moments where, you know, we want to get turnovers, but I wouldn't say that you have to, you know, force a turnover. If you just keep, if you're trying to go out there and force and trying to create a play, that's when you, you would jump on a double move and you give up a big play. So. Um, I think we did a good job. <clears throat> we had some sacks. We just got to get more, you know, strip attempts at the ball. 
Um, that way we can, you know, get the ball loose and get it back to our offense. Amani, as a team, when, when there's a game where it's execution here, self-inflicted wounds there that really cost you a game, you probably feel like you maybe deserved to win before that. Does it make it easier to come back to work that, man, we clean up a few of these things, we're going to be good? Or does it make it harder to swallow that you should be 1-0 right now if not for that um, I mean, I think that, like I said before, we got a great group of guys in our locker room. And, you know, this training camp, I think this is the best team that we've had here at Tennessee as far as just camaraderie, chemistry, and, you know, a team, like teamwork. So um, my faith in the guys, I know that obviously we, we hate that we lost, but we got veterans in this room that know it's a long season and know that, you know, just one loss, we can't make that turn into, you know, two or three losses. Do you expect to get more uh, pass rush uh, opportunities after Having a pretty successful one there uh, yesterday. I mean, if I would have probably got the strip sack, I'd probably get some more. But I mean, I just hopefully I can just do that every time I, you know, get sent on a blitz. You, you mentioned Slag and Coach talked about the combo of me and Simmons, but Sebastian also was a, a beneficiary of what they can do too. Is he almost an overlooked guy? I mean, he, he made some plays and had his presence known yesterday. Yeah, no, Sebastian's nice. I mean, whenever whenever he was at um, the Chargers, I thought he was a good player. And I mean, he was a starter there. And I mean, he's a player that is, I think, is overlooked just because you do have, you know, Sweat and Jeff in the in the game. But I mean, he's that that undercover guy that sneaks up on you and can shed a block, get to a sack, or come up in the run game. Can he be saying something to you after the game? Um, yeah, he said he said a lot of new faces over there. I, I was like, yeah, not a lot of us left, man. But uh, it was exciting to see him. Good to see him. He's doing well on the execution. Uh, you know, post snap, I feel like. Pre-snap communication was, was fine, though. What did they do in the second half? Or maybe what did you guys not do up front that led to such a glaring difference between what you're able to accomplish on the ground? Uh, main thing, like as it says, is executing, uh, just you know, doing our job. And uh, I feel like they didn't do anything too differently. Uh, a few different uh, fronts they showed us in the second half, but this came down to us, you know, uh, just kind of you know, losing the game, uh, kind of just took ourselves out and you know, didn't make enough plays, and uh, that's what it comes down to. Those two drives, the scoring, the touchdown ones that you had, it seemed like there was a rhythm. They were long yeah. drives. Is that true? Like, did you feel that rhythm in the huddle? Yeah, we you know stayed ahead of the, the schedule, stayed on track, and uh, didn't beat ourselves with penalties in those drives. So, you know, and in the second half we had a few false starts and got behind the chains, and that kind of kills drives. So. As long as we stay stay on track, man, stay on schedule, we'll, we'll be a good offense. We just got to learn how to not not beat ourselves. I know, and it was just week, just one game. I mean, what's what's the I guess feeling in here as you guys coming here today, trying to turn the yeah. page, and but also want to learn from some of that. It def definitely stings, you know, losing a game like that up 17-0, all the momentum on our side, and then uh, you know letting that letting that one slip away it stings, but. You know, we come in here today to watch it, learn from it, and flush it. You know, we got a good Jets defense coming in, a uh, good Jets team coming in uh, this Sunday. So we got to move on fast. And we can't can't hang our head on this one. What do you guys feel about kind of pass protection overall as an offensive line? Uh, some some good areas, but you know, not good enough. And we'll once we watch the film, we'll see that. Got to give them you know more more time, have them more comfortable in the pocket and. Uh, that's what we're going to continue to to work on to do. We got a, a young group. Uh, our standard is high, and we didn't we didn't reach that standard yesterday. JC seemed to struggle at, at times. You had a chance to talk to him about uh, about how it went for him. Uh, yeah, I've talked to him uh, on the plane and a little bit uh, after the game. But you know, it, it, it comes with being a rookie. You know, we all have we all have things we need to work on. And uh, knowing him, he's going to be out there tomorrow. Uh, on, on even on the off days, he's trying to get better and work on what he needs to work on. Uh, that goes for all of us, the rest of us up front. So um, everyone has things to work on. I, I know he's going to be ready to go the rest of the way. In the second half, as that lead just kind of soared away, like, what was the vibe like in the huddle? How were you guys you know, uh, situation? Just trying to get something going, just trying to get that en energy back. You know, you kind of felt that momentum shift, you know, after the, uh, after the punt was blocked. But we just got to find a way to um, – you know, put it on our shoulders up front, specifically, and uh, get it done. Find a way, by any means, to come out with a win. Uh, we fell short of that, but just learn the experience for next time. And Brian Callahan, he said yesterday that they changed some things up front defensively. Is that something that you saw, and how did that impact the team? 
Yeah, they second half they they uh, wanted to stop the run, so they presented more of um, some jam front and a little bit more um, than they did in the first half. But you know, a few more stunts here and there, but it wasn't nothing uh, you know, too big, nothing that we haven't seen on film before, and we, we weren't prepared, prepared for. Uh, we just got to execute better. In your experience, after a team gets a game under its belt, how much of a curve is there for learning and improving? It's a lot, a lot we can learn from. Uh, you know, learned a lot about ourselves. You know how we have to continue to, you know, put the put our foot on the gas when we have leads like that. Um, There's a lot, a lot of room for improvement after every game. Even even if we would have won that game, it's so much that we should be doing better at this point. Uh, and we're gonna gonna work to improve on that this week. You know, it's different than watching film. But how much can you take from watching the game live tonight? Uh, you mean the Jets? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, just a lot. You know, I like to just watch you know, the personnel, see who I'm going to be going against. Uh, it's different from a different point of view than watching film, like you said, but it's a lot you can take from that. I'll I look forward to watching it tonight. What specific challenges do the Jets give you? Uh, well, they're, they're penetrating front. Uh, very basic, very simple uh, schematically, but you know, the players they have, uh, they have a good front. And um, a penetrating front, they just you know, get, try to get upfield and cause disrupt, disruption uh, with their speed off the ball. So I've played them, I think, every year since I've been in the league. I've played them every single year. So it's a, a challenge every, every time I play them. Not sure. Uh, things just didn't go our way. It's, it's, it's not like we went to halftime, relax. You know, everyone was saying it's zero zero. We got to finish. Uh, we just didn't. It's, I wouldn't say that we were relaxed or we didn't or we took it for granted. It just comes down to just continuing to do the basics at a high level, and that's where we got to continue to grow. You mentioned that there's changes on the defensive line there in the second half. Did, did you guys, as an offensive line, did you do things to, to counter their their changes? Uh yeah yeah we you know we called a few plays uh, that we felt like were good you know from what they were presenting but uh, whether it's execution or just didn't uh, make a play uh, not sure what happened but you know they they made plays in the second half we didn't make enough. Uh, Lloyd, uh, totally different subject. Uh, have you had a chance with the travel to see what happened with Tyree Kill on his way to the stadium yesterday? Uh, and have you ever had any kind of an issue like that? And how worrisome is it, you know, for, for a player who, you know, so, you know, do you drive yourself to home games? Yeah, I did, I did get a, a chance to see that. Uh, yeah, so I, didn't, I don't know the full details, but I know it was a crazy situation. I'm glad he's okay coming from out of that. But, uh, yeah, I drive myself in the home games, to the home games and from. Uh, haven't experienced anything like that, so that was very unique to, to see. But again, I'm just glad every everyone's okay, and hopefully uh, everything everything will be fine the rest of the way. You know, from a fan's perspective, when your team loses a game where you feel pretty confident they beat themselves, as opposed to getting outclassed by the opponent, kind of mixed emotions. Because on one hand, you felt like you were good enough; mm -hmm. on the other hand, you did it to yourself. From a player's perspective, is that kind of a similar feeling in the locker room? And how do you guys process yeah. when you feel like you really just beat yourself more than God? Yeah, it's similar similar situation, but. You know, there's a lot of things that happen within the game that we we control and we got we have to be better. But like you said, we did. You know, we beat ourselves. There's no excuse that they made plays. We didn't. So we got to learn from this and moving forward, man. Like I said, when we get a, a lead like that, we got to finish. It's you know, no doubt about it. We got to finish.